Greetings and welcome, retro programmers. The eight hardware sprites are some of the Commodore 64 marbles. You can multiplex these sprites all over the screen. You can use a single sprite to make an animation. You can also use them to scroll a text all over the screen instead of using the screen memory. Today I'm going to show you how to write a small assembly routine to scroll pixel by pixel from right to left giant letters on the screen of a Commodore 64. The trick lies on seven expanded sprites with the same Y position but with a different X position. The sprites do not move, their positions on X and Y do not change, instead the bits within the bytes defining the shape of the sprites are shifted all along these various bytes giving the illusion that the letters are moving. Are you ready? I'll be using CBMPRG Studio to write the code during this video. First, let's specify the starting address. Uh, it's going to be C000 in hexadecimal. Uh, and let's now define a string of the characters we want to output on the screen. We will label um, the, the string text string. It's a lovely and original label. Uh, and the, um, the string will be terminated with byte zero, which will mark the end of the string uh, when characters are read one by one. Uh, a reminder about my assembler, CBMPRG Studio. The characters between apostrophes in CBMPRG Studio are converted to screen codes, while characters between quotation marks in CBMPRG Studio are converted to Petsky codes. Now, before writing the main routine, let's prepare what I call the environment. We will disable the basic and kernel ROMs, uh, also, we will disable the CIA interrupt timers through the following set of instructions. Let's put the code 0 for black in the registers controlling the color of the background and frame. We need 7 sprites for the scroller, therefore we need to define the value of the 7 sprite pointers for those sprites, which will be sprite 0 to 6. The pointer's value sets the starting address of the 63 bytes used for shaping each sprite. It must be multiplied by 64 to obtain the relevant starting address. Add the starting address of the memory bank allowed to VIG2 if changed. I use the loop to gain some space in memory, but you may decide to unroll the loop. Now I will define some constants that I will use in my assembly source code. Uh, these constants will define the starting address of the bytes used for the shapes of each sprite. The starting address of the bytes used for sprite 0 is located at the address 2000 in hexadecimal. The starting address for sprite 1 is located at the address for sprite 0 plus 64 in decimal and the starting address for sprite 2 um, is located at the address for sprite 1 plus 64 in decimal and so on that's the idea now let's make the seven sprites become fully transparent by putting 0 in their 63 respective bytes defining their shapes a loop using a direct uh, addressing mode indexed by X will be fine to do the task. Let's define the Y position of the seven sprites. Um, it will be the same for all seven sprites. Let's put the value 100 in decimal in their Y position registers. Let's define the X position of the seven sprites. They must be adjacent without any gap between themselves as their width will be doubled. Uh, that is, uh, they will be positioned every 48 pixels. 
let's define the x position over 255 of sprites 6 and 7. Let's define the color of the 7 sprites. We will put uh, 15. That's uh, for light, the code for light gray in their respective single color registers from DO27 and DO2D. Let's enable the sprites. And now let's double their height and width. Now we can write the main routine. I need to define two addresses keeping tracks of variables. Text string position is the label of the first address that will be used to keep the index of the characters being read within my predefined string. Characters uh, data will be fetched within the character generator ROM at the address D O O O in hexadecimal and they will be uh, copied onto the bytes used for the third column of sprite 6 shape. Indeed, each sprite is defined by a matrix of three columns made of 21 bytes. I will then use the instructions ASL row to push from right to left the bits within the sprite's matrices from sprite 6 to sprite 0. Bit position is the label of the first address that will be used to keep tracks of 8 bit pushes from 8 to 1. I will use the address FD for text string position and the address FE for bit position. Well, the default value at the address FE and FD is 0. I don't need to change the, the value at the address FD. However, I need to put um, 8, the value 8 at the address um, FE, which is bit position, my label pay, um, bit position. X will be loaded with the value of text string position and it will be used as an index reader. The accumulator will be loaded with the screen codes of the characters through these instructions unless the screen code equals zero. If that is the case, then the value zero is stored at uh, the address for a text string position and the loop will continue. We need to find the address of the character's data within the memory. We must parallelly multiply the screen code in the accumulator by 8 and then add the result to the value DOOO which is the address of the character's uh, generator ROM. The result will be placed at the address FB for the low byte and the address uh, FC for the high byte. I will use the instruction uh, ASL to multiply the value of the accumulator by 2 and uh, if the carry is set the instruction raw applied to the address FC will um, <laughs> add uh, will multiply by 2 the, the potential carry. Now let's change the value at the address uh, 1 which is a 6510 uh, register so as to the CPU may read and access the character generator ROM. Um, actually the bits 0 to 2 control the memory access. Addresses at FB and FC now hold the pointer to the starting address of the character's data. Let's place the character's data in the bytes of the third column of sprite 6. That's the addresses of uh, sprite 6 plus 2, uh, sprite 6 plus 5 and sprite 6 plus 8. Uh, and so on up to sprite plus 23 inclusive. 
Um, but first, let's define the address for uh, Sprite 6 plus 2. It will be our base address. I'm using a loop with a self-modifying code. Uh, my constant third byte address sp6 is modify um, until uh, the value, uh, uh, the, the Y register uh, reaches the value eight. And then the, uh, the routine, well, the part of the routine will uh, again modify uh, the constant third byte address sp6 to um, give the initial value back. Instead of using self-modifying code, you may prefer to unroll the loop. Uh, it will be longer, but you, you will gain some cycles. Now I need to restore bit 2 at the address 01. The CPU will no longer be able to access the character's generated ROM, but it will be able to access the I.O. registers. Now I will shift the bit values in the bytes defining the shapes of the sprites by pairs of 3. Indeed, the vertical of a shape of the shape of a, a sprite is defined by three bytes. Uh, X will be used. The register X will be used as an index for shifting. It must be incremented by three after each loop. The eight of a character is eight. Therefore, if multiplied by three, that gives us twenty-four shifts. Now, let's add a rest uh, waiting loop to add some smoothness and prevent any uh, jittering. Let's decrement the bit position and loop until a character has been shifted completely from right to left. Value 8, which is the number of bits of a character, was initially placed at bit position. We can add some change in the colors of the sprites and then uh, the, the terminate the the routine by this instruction gmp and return to the address main now let's try Works great. 